Get in. Well, that was enjoyable. I enjoyed it. Can't beat a game of snooker, can you? I've just been uh, speaking to a couple of chaps in there. Big porky on off scene now. We've took over all Edlington. Cunny's brother, Denneby, Max bro. We're in Woff now, where men and men and women know it. I've just seen a woman in there walk straight in in a pair of slippers with a roll up in her uh, hanging out the mouth. He looked like somebody's mother who I know. I don't want to mention her name. No mothers talk on this channel. All mums are lovely. You're not in there for a bank holiday Monday. Uh, well, what can we do? Should we get Clinton Woods a ring? See how Clinton's doing. See how Clinton's doing, eh? Give my pallor in Clinton Woods. First time I ever got to know Clinton Woods. I gave him a coat. We were only two days old. Somebody told me it was worth 400 quid, but I think it was worth probably about half as much as that. People always try to hype things, don't they? And I get it, Clinton. There's a story with it, but I'm not going to repeat it. And he's like, What's that giving me a coat for? I don't want a coat. What are you after? So I'm not after no. I said, I've got to throw this coat, Clinton, tomorrow or tonight. It can never be used again. Oh, I don't want to do that. I need to, uh, I don't want to do that, I said I'm going to get you Clinton, you're having this coat. He said, well I just met you, I can't give me a coat. So this went back and forward, back and forward. All night for about an hour and a half. And Dennis's dad says, why don't they just take his coat? <laughs> i never forget. Anyway, eventually he took, he took coat. And I've been good mates ever since. And I don't, you don't see much, you don't see Dan now, which is a shame, isn't it? Really. And I'm like in middle, aren't I? Well, that's just another boxing story, isn't it? Dan and Ryan Rhodes have fell out. I like Ryan Rhodes. Dan and Steffi Bull have fell out. I'm not speaking to Steffi, I'm a Steffi. <laughs> Hashtag levels. So that's that, it goes, isn't it? Me and Mick Whale haven't fell out. So he's on the same page as me and Mick Whale, he's my pal. I like Mick Whale. I like the Josh. The Gwyn scares me. When I see the Gwyn, I'm on edge. I think, you know, the Gwyn's here. You know, if Gwyn walked in my local, I swear to God I'd go like that. Put your head down, don't you, when Gwyn walks in. Oh, you know, Gwyn's in. Gwyn's in. You know what's going to happen next? Somebody's going to get iced. Yeah, he's all right, Gwyn. He wants best for his brother, doesn't he? And I hope that down the line, we don't all fall out. Because boxing, I've noticed that boxing can cause some right problems. It's, it's, it's all emotional and things like that. I didn't really want to go into this, and I'm not going to say it full story, but Spencer Fearon uh, follows me now on Twitter, and he got in touch with me. I unfollowed him. Sorry, I unblocked him, and... Uh, I followed him and he followed me and then he, he asked for my number and I rung him. And uh, Sorry, and he rung me, sorry. I'm not going to go into detail, but maybe I am a little bit harsh in my videos. Uh, but I don't mean to be. It's just that I'm very distrusting of people and I don't suffer fools gladly. If you can spend 122 months in prison from October 91 till May 04, and I did a month in 87 when I was 16 and I did two week in oops, 2015 for that driving chase where I got chased. Google my name in read story, it's a load of knackers what they said in court. 
the copper got his end, hands round my round my chain in back of that cop car, and he said, "I want to just met you when I want to wring your fucking neck." Because obviously I'll be in a dick, one not I? I said, well, you're arresting me, your missus is at home. Doing things with other men. That ain't how I put it, but... So maybe I deserve my neck ringing, but... Hey, good pint in there, that was. But, boxing's the only sport where everybody can fall out, and I don't understand that, why you can go on an amazing journey. I mean, look at Den and Clinton Woods, right? Den's house is smack opposite Clinton Woods. One electric gates against another electric gates. One a big like farmhouse mansion type thing and one a, a biggish cottage. Opposite. Middle of nowhere and they're opposite each other. A cop car. Thought they were a cop car then it's a taxi. Two, op two hours is opposite each other, don't get on. Well, I tell you, don't speak. I don't know what's going on, I don't get involved with it. And I think that's a bit crap, that, isn't it? Because you can have a kid, Clinton, right? And he's been with, he's, no, Clinton's known Dennis 25 year. 25 year since he turned pro. So he, he turned pro 25 years ago, but he knew Dennis when he were an amateur. So they've been through all that together. The cop car, I'm being pulled here. Yeah. The taxi man, my eyes must be going. They can, they can know each other all that time, and then for some reason, something happens and you don't speak. I, I just don't, I don't like that. Power 18 again. Power 18, I knew what I knew now, nothing. No, I just think that. I'm gonna go in there for a pint later and see my mate Acker. Uh, no, I just think that. Boxing's on this sport, it can get you at it, can't it? It can get everybody at it. It's full of egos and emotions and people trying to take your money and all this and that. For example, and we've spoke about this before, me and Dennis probably went, if you watched that video me and Dennis did, at the beginning of 2018, I think it's called, uh, Dennis and Russ Porky Road Trip, where Dennis goes on about Ambrose Mendy. Woo, cock car. Dennis goes on about Ambrose Mendy, where we all know what happened there, don't we, Ambrose? Ambrose came to Den and he said, Den, I need to borrow 11 grand off you. So Den said, no problem, lent him 11 grand. Where's, where, how long was that? No, it's years before I know Den. I think Den asked him a year later what's happening with that dough and he said, what dough? He said, oh, that 11 grand. No, I don't owe you 11 grand. So you do, I lent you it. Oh, that, didn't you get me invoice? No, why would you invoice me? All that were for some work that I did behind scenes. What work did you do behind scenes? Oh, I think I, uh, di didn't I advise you on uh, some fight? You're supposed to have advised him on a fight. Then he says, how did you advise me on that? No, you didn't. Oh, well, I did. And if you didn't get me invoice, I'll send you it. Do you see where I'm coming from? That's what you're up against, people like that. It's just like being a drug dealer. But you're dealing in people, aren't you, with boxing? No. That's why I don't like to get involved. I don't like to get involved with the money side of boxing because with my criminal record, I am more than capable of going and doing what I want. And it would be all or nothing. I would be doing a life sentence. And a lot of these people that are in the boxing industry sometimes they take liberties and these people have to be seen and dealt with now there's people in boxing who I call bluffers and what I mean by bluffers there's people who try to make out that they're gangsters and they're connected to other people but really they're not 
because why would you need anybody else to deal with your problems? You deal with your problems yourself because nobody at the end of the day is going to do a prison for somebody else's problem. Nobody's going to do it. This is why I admire people in boxing who are pretty fearless. I don't know Dean White's story. I know for a fact it ain't his name because my lawyers told me what his name is and it ain't that. And I'm not going to go into details on that now because it's negative. I'm trying to be positive but I get where he's coming from. I get where he's coming from. He's no different to me. But has he done any jail? No. I don't think he has, has he? I don't know. But the point, the moral of the story is this. Boxing is full of bluffers. There's people who think they can do this and do that. At the end of the day, they can't do the fucking jail. So... Do you know what I mean? But what can you do? What can you do? You can, all you can do is just be yourself. Be your own man, but I haven't got anything against anybody trying to make a few quid in boxing. But don't try and ever, ever try and con me. Because it won't happen. I won't be conned. I've seen it, it all in life now. For me to get ripped off in boxing, it's never going to happen. I don't deal I don't deal with money do I? I don't deal with the money side of boxing. Now there's a lot of people that do. There's a lot of people that do. Where's fucking Affelstone round here man? We're not wrong way. Uh, there's a lot of people in boxing that deal with the money side of it and there's people that that pull strokes all the time. There's people that have had money in box like this way. There's, there's people that have had money in boxing and they're never going to get any money ever, 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 ever again. Ever again. They're never going to have anything in boxing. Now what they try and do, they try and use uh, intimidation and things like that to bluff the way in. But, my advice to them people is this. You will be caught out because life's full of bluffers, isn't it? They're everywhere, aren't they? People bluff all the time. Now, it's just my opinion. I just don't trust anybody in the boxing industry at all, unless they're working with me. And then I have to suss them out. Mick Wayne has wised me up. Chris Smedley wised me up a lot. And then when I was doing a bit of work with Steffi Bull a couple of years ago, he wised me up as well. He uh, he pointed a few things out to me. I had to go in Conyers for a drink dinner, but I'm banned. I don't think Steffi Bull's mate Dennis is going to let me back in. Are you Dennis? No. Hey. Well, Big Porky gets banned from Conyers. I liked it in there as well. I used to have this big chain right when I was 28 stone. I could hardly breathe. I used to walk up this hill. <gasps> oh, big fat, big fat pig. Michelin man. I had this big chain. It weighed half a kilo. And the anchor on it weighed 180 gram. I had this 180 gram anchor. It was massive. I was walking around like that. Grease neck. And I was in there one day and I was sat next to this woman and this man. And they kept flipping it. They kept coming up to me. And I've got this chain and it was down here and they kept flipping it and going like that. Going, oh, 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 where are that from? You know, they had too much to drink. It's really none of your business where I got it from. Anyway, eventually, my mate said, oh, don't do out in here. So I, what I did, I bought them a drink each. Uh, it was I bought them a, a, Ma, a Bulmers or a Magna. You know, them that you get with eyes. I bought them one of them each. Anyway, got talking. This seemed all right. So when it come round to my round again, everybody's saying we're not buying them a drink. So I'll get their drink. You're all right. They seem decent people. But I told her after the first time, you don't do that again with my chain because I'm out with my pals. <laughs> what did she do? Woman. She did it again. She flipped it up. Now, obviously I'm raging, but by this stage, I'd had a lot to drink and 
I've been going in and out of the toilets all night, you know, like you do, powdering your nose. And uh, she did it again. I swear that's the last time you're going to do that. Went, all right. And everybody was saying, don't do that to him. Well, first time I'd gone in there. Anyway, they did it. And uh, look at this here. Looks like I've been grassed, doesn't it? <laughs> that was close, wasn't it? <laughs> Thought I'd been grassed like last time. See, that's why you should always drive steady if you've had a beer. And I've only had one beer. So anyway, this woman, she, she did it again, didn't she? She flipped me chain. Well, that's it, isn't it? So... But by this stage, they're on their second pint. Because you get a glass, don't you, and a bottle with ice. They give you a glass with ice and bottle, and they both got them topped up. They're just ready to tuck into second bottle. You know, five or a bottle. So, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I'm trying to be a nice guy, aren't I? Don't forget, it's the first time I've gone in there in, since I was a teenager. It's never really been that my scene in there. Anyway, in one quick motion, Red Mist comes down, doesn't it, on me. Whoosh! I've drowned him. Dennis has asked me to leave. I've said fuck off. I've come back with about 20 people and they've asked me. So all my mates are there, we'll go somewhere else. Because they couldn't really leave me, could they, for me to leave. They wouldn't have done that, so we went somewhere else. But the point I'm trying to make is, you, have to, you can't be pushed, can you? You can't be pushed. Well, that's basically it, really. You can only take so much, can't you, before you fucking think, what am I doing here? Here, cop for that, have a drink all of it. I'm not buying you drinks. I sit here flipping my chain like I'm some sort of prick. Even though I am a prick, aren't I? Let's have it right, I'm a dick at times. But, you know... I'm debating now whether to go out. What can you do but getting back to uh, boxing because this is what this channel is it's boxing it's not the adventures of porky is it jesus somebody sent me an email i don't know who it is he keeps trying to make out his name's colin but well, it could be anybody couldn't it i mean who have we really fell out with on social media matt bows remember him matt bows i went to his house when i went to his house you never come out of the house, did you, Matt? <laughs> never come out. Big tough guy. Big tough guy on social media. Got personal, didn't he? This is why you can't get too personal on social media. Right? Don't have a go at my family. If you only have a go, go at me. If people want to keep sending me emails saying, Die, die, die. Fat, C-U-N-T, die. Well, that's up to you, isn't it? But like I said, me and my little channel and the people that follow it, we're all people that are passionate about boxing. We love boxing. It's in our hearts. Every one of them who follows me, they love boxing. I feel it in their emails, in the comments. All of them, they love it. Every day interacting, they love it. They love boxing and there's nothing better than boxing people, is there? I can have fallouts with all these people, but I still respect them. I mean, Terry Chapman Dharma digs me out every other day. He's always pulling me leg or trying to test me or... But... You know, it's boxing, in he? Through and through, and that's why I love him. I like that there. Look at that there for a car. MGB. When I was a kid, my dad said he was going to get one of them. He ended up with... He bought a 280ZX Nissan when I was 16. And I wanted him to buy an MG. MGB GT. Proper British classic, innit? I like stuff like that. Yeah, I like stuff like that. I don't know if I've mentioned this before on the channel. When I was 29, I had a few quid. I went to buy a lo I went to buy a Lotus. And Gibbo up here put me off it. Oh, you don't want to buy it? It's a thousand pound a tyre. You'll not be able to afford to run it. You'll have done all your money on it. If all goes wrong, I won't be able to mend it. So yeah, it'd be too much for you, wouldn't it? You're an I'm a nail man. 
Nobody wanted me to buy that Lotus Esprit. Nobody. And yet he, he can go buy a 911. Or, or all them cars he has, but yeah. When I wanted to jump from an MR2 to a... I'm going back 19, 20 year now. 2001, 18 year. When I wanted to go from an MR2, a G-Reg MR2 in 01, you know the Mark 1 shaped G-Reg, the last one ever made on a white, in white. I wanted to go from a G-Reg MR2 to a, a Lotus Esprit turbo, 2.24 cylinder, and nobody wanted me to get it. Oh, you don't want that, you'll look a dick, you'll look a dick. Unbelievable. That kind of that kind of attitude, but I I wanted it, but yeah, probably wouldn't have been able to afford to, wouldn't it? This is why people should do their own thing. But anyway, getting back to boxing, Clinton Woods is a legend. Terry, you're right, he is a legend. I went through Clinton Woods' CV the other day, Tarver. Antonio Tarver, Tarver is Cloud. Three fights with Glenn Johnson. He beat Glenn Johnson, the same guy who beat Roy Jones. Clinton fought Roy Jones as well. Do you know all, all them all them fights he had Clinton? He beat Rico Oi. I mean he killed somebody, didn't he? Rico Oi got nine years. Walking in the middle of the road with your dog. But but yeah, so banned from here as well now, aren't I? You're not allowed anywhere, am I? I might as well just go home, aren't I? But yeah, Clinton Woods is a legend. He is a legend and a uh, legendary fighter and trainer. He's got a gym now. All you people who are following me. I'm going here for a beer. I might go in here for a beer at Top Club. Hey up Ross! How you doing? Not bad mate, are you? This is my cousin Stephen. Say hello. Hello, who is it? I'm just doing a video for the channel. Alright. How you doing Stephen? Alright mate, yeah. Still a window cleaner? Oh, still fucking How many kids now. you got now? Uh, more fucking three girls, mate, four grandkids. Well, grand you're a granddad? Four times mate. <laughs> I've got a three-year-old uh, grandson, I've got a seven-month-old grandson, yeah. I've got a, uh, a four-month-old granddaughter. What do you do all day? Just shag? Just shag, mate. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? You go out for a beer? <laughs> you look like our Paul, you. You reckon? You look like our Paul, yeah, he's fucking double. I bet just look a bit older than him, don't I, mate? Because all fucking life I've oh. had, innit? How's your mum and dad all right? They're all right, mate, yeah. Bad back and shit like that. But other than that, mate, they're, they're, they're 76 now, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 sorry to hear about me Uncle Mike. I, 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 I found out off Tracy when I said that Max bro. Yeah, yeah. Who we at with? Who we at with? You not going in? No, I've just dropped our last mum off. Just put these windows up and I can hear you. Where are you going now? Um, well, I'm going to pop to our old man's for ten minutes because I ain't seen him for three days and he gets arse on him for Uncle Dad, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, I'll have a fucking cup of tea with him and whatnot and then go home and have a drink to eat, sit on decking. Uh, you got decking at ours, aren't you? You got an old posh on me. Right back, like, well, I bought a house off here, off our lass's mum and dad, like. But right. I did it up, do you know what I mean? It was fucked. Yeah. So, um, he let me have it cheap, so I got a bit of money to do it up and a bit of my money, and I'm so brand new inside now, like. Are you busy with windows? Yeah, six days a week, mate, me and our Andrew. I work with our Tony for a week, yeah. and then me and our Andrew's got around doing care homes on. and things like Two that. Two sec. Right, I'll continue this conversation later. I have to excuse my uh, cousin there. This is why I very rarely come back to visit people around here. Because every time I see them, I think, oh my god, that's another 25 Easter eggs every Easter for them. Because all they do is make kids around here. It's mining village mentality, isn't it? You've got to have 100 kids, haven't you? If you haven't got 100 kids in your house, it's no good. I'm joking. So, that's about it really. What's going on here?
Yeah, so other than that, I'm all right. I'm, uh, but getting back to Clinton Woods, I just think he's a legend. I think that he slid under radar because he don't work on Sky, does he? When Clinton were working, here I'll tell you a story I can tell you, I think I've told it before, I've told it before. When Clinton, right, were at Sky, doing pundit work on a, I think it was a fight between Roy Jones and somebody else, because he's fought Roy, hasn't he? And I think he's fought Tarver, and I think they fought each other, or was it Roy Jones against? It was a Roy Jones fight and they got Clinton on board. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I think Clinton said something like, he shouldn't be in with him. It's a mismatch or something. And I think somebody at Sky, I don't know who, so I can't say it with Mr Bean, so don't quote me on it. So I'm just going to say I don't know. He said, oh, we want you to say this and that about that person. And Clinton said, look, You've had me on here for my opinion, and he shouldn't be in with him. And I don't think Sky liked it, and they've not had him back. So, so that's that. That's what happens, isn't it? I'm afraid. That's what happens. Uh, so, if you if you're a straight talker in boxing, what can you do? You've got to be a straight talker. So. Just one of them things in it, but so I'm home now anyway, so So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Uh, I'll add something else to this as well, a few videos as well, because it's just been fucking load of fucking mumbling and old crap on it. So get my tea now. I'm gonna go for free out of free for 20 quid. I mean, come on.